Hello and welcome to our online service for this Palm Sunday. We were in St James at 8 o'clock this morning for our BCP communion service and we'll be there again at 6.30 this evening for our choir-led service leading us into Holy Week. Um, but mostly this morning we were outside at 10, 11 and 12. We were at various places around the parish processing with our donkey as people cried Hosanna. Uh, our reading, which I'm going to give you in a moment, is from Matthew's Gospel and it's the traditional Palm Sunday Gospel reading. Then you're going to hear the sermon that Rosemary gave at 8 o'clock this morning. Then the intercessions that Jeff Bartholomew gave outside uh, at our wandering donkey service this morning. Uh, and then finally a choir piece, uh, one which is traditional for today. So our Gospel reading from Matthew chapter 21, beginning at the first verse. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfil what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowd were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Palm Sunday, the start of Holy Week. I wonder how many donkeys have been walking around villages and towns this morning to reenact that ride to Jerusalem. Our donkey was outside the Gomshal Club at 10 o'clock this morning, up at Peaslate Church by 11 o'clock, and then at Shear Church at 12 o'clock. And there was a short service at each place. No, the donkey didn't have to walk all the way, don't worry. He was transported in his horse box between the churches. And it's not just here, but all over the world, Christians will be celebrating today. And did you know that every donkey in the whole world has a cross of darker hair on its back? It goes across its shoulders and down its spine. And tradition says it's to celebrate this day. Well, back in 2017, I and the group I was with were privileged to be in the Palm Sunday procession, believe it or not, going up the high street in Nazareth. And it seemed as though the whole village had turned out, waving palm branches and singing, Hosanna in the highest. And then most of them at the top of the high street went into the church of the Annunciation and we went into the Anglican church. Great celebrations. Our service in the Anglican church was half in Aramaic and half in English. We sang the familiar hymns, all glory, Lord and honour, and you know it fitted, it fitted the tune. It was quite something. Palm branches absolutely everywhere. Celebrations in plenty for this special holy day. Celebrations, yes. But you know, today presents us with some strong cross currents of emotion. Celebration, but also foreboding. Because unlike that crowd 2000 years ago, we know that this king is riding to his death. A king like no other, 
riding into Jerusalem on a donkey to fulfill that prophecy made by Zechariah all those years ago. A king, yes, but unrecognized by those over whom he rules. Those who fear Jesus and plot against him have not gone away. Within a few short days, even those who now welcome him will turn away, will run away, or side with his enemies. And Hosanna will turn to crucify. Yet even on this holy day, Jesus knows what awaits him. He knew his fate, and knowing his fate, any ordinary man would have turned and run as far and as fast as his legs could carry him. But this was no ordinary man. His whole life had been in complete obedience to God, and nothing, absolutely nothing, would divert him from that now. He knew what he was doing. He knew what lay ahead. He alone can see the bigger picture. And the pattern of Jesus is the pattern of that suffering servant in Isaiah, who continues to be totally focused on God, whatever pain or trouble he may face. And the resources he has to share with others, including ourselves, come from the discipline of praying and listening to God daily, every single day. And this and this alone gives him hope and strength. Jesus is indeed the fulfilment of that prophecy in Isaiah. He will ride into Jerusalem. He will give his back to the smiters. He will be despised and rejected. He will be struck down and afflicted. He will be like a lamb led to the slaughter. And yet, knowing all that, Jesus deliberately rides along that road. The path he has walked throughout all his ministry led inevitably to the cross. Yet it's a path he chose freely out of obedience to God. Little tweaks and changes, little bits of compromise, little bits of playing to the crowds, of using his power to please, all these could have brought Jesus to a very different place. But that would have been at the cost of obscuring his message about God. And St Paul comes to the conclusion that it's only because Jesus is totally obedient to God that we know he is to be worshipped. Jesus' whole focus was on making the Father visible and present. And this constantly meant resisting and rejecting the common human ways for power and recognition for himself death and hell, sin and evil had to be faced square on and had to be overcome. And this is all for us. This is all for our salvation. To save us from the powers of darkness, Jesus was prepared to confront them himself simply because of his immeasurable love for us. No cross, no crown. So here we stand at the start of this holy week. Let us go through each day with our Lord. Let us pray with him, eat with him, watch with him until we too stand at the foot of the cross. Even then, let us keep faith with him. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, 
ride on to die. Bow thy meek head to mortal pain, then take, O God, thy power and reign. Amen. Let's bow our heads and let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to come together with Dougal the Donkey. Lord, we give thanks for this special day. As we're reminded of how humble you were, you are and always will be. Lord, we give thanks for opening our hearts and our minds to be reminded of your sacrifice for us so that we may be forgiven our sins. Lord, we know that in this busy world it's easy for us to turn our backs on you and for that we are all sorry. Father, we pray for those who are in need of you at this time. Those who those who are struggling with health, with sickness, those who are struggling with cost of living, we pray for your provision in their lives. We pray for healing. And we pray for those who have yet to come to know you, that in this holy week there will be an opportunity for those to pause for a moment and to ask for your help in their lives. Lord, we pray for our King Charles. In just a month's time, we'll be coming together as a nation to celebrate his coronation. And Lord, as Tim has just reminded us, he will be riding through the streets of London in a golden carriage, pulled by mighty horses. And yet you rode into Jerusalem and sat upon a donkey. Lord, in the week ahead, the days ahead, remind us that it's okay to be humble. It's good to be kind. It's good to show loving, caring and understanding for us. Father, we also pray for our government as we continue daily struggles. We pray for wisdom and for those who are stuck in the port of Dover. We pray for patience, Lord. <laughs> Father, we are reminded today that you gave us your son as an ultimate sacrifice so that we could believe we pray for those who don't yet believe and we pray for boldness in our lives for each and every one of us here today that they may have an encounter with someone they maybe do not know or, or a relative that they may be encouraged pray together. Father, we pray for our church. We pray for our young people that they may be encouraged to share the good news with their friends and their friends. And we pray for family feast. We pray for our volunteers to step forward and we pray for young people to join us as we celebrate your son Jesus Christ. And we pray all these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.